What's up, everybody? And welcome to another episode. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share the video. Hit the join button and become a member. Members get exclusive content. Now, I know that I've been gone for a minute, a bit of a disappearing act. It was not intentional. The equipment that I had, that I had been using, I no longer had access to for different reasons. It just picked up and walked away. And I didn't really want to start recording on my phone again since I stepped my game up a little bit with the equipment and the editing. And then to go back to the dry phone, I was like, let me just wait until I, to, uh, until I can get some equipment and start over. That was probably a mistake because I wasn't focused as much on the equipment as I should have been. <clears throat> and in the process, neglected my channel somewhat. I apologize, but I'm back with a vengeance. I went live the other day and said that I was going to order some equipment. I ordered that equipment today. Should be here, from my understanding, tomorrow. In which case, there will still be no editing on the videos, but the equipment that I ordered, I believe is top notch. And so uh, the quality of the videos will be better. And as soon as I get this equipment, I'm going straight to work since I'm behind. And I know that my true viewers, my true supporters want my content. I'm going to be dropping content every day when I get this equipment. I had to go and get it on my own. Being a man, being autonomous is my aspiration. Being independent is something that every man should aspire to. This circumvents any unnecessary problems. Had I had my own equipment, I would have never had to neglect my channel. I can't put that on anyone but myself. Nevertheless, as I said, here I am, back again in the flesh. Now listen, I did a Cam Capone news interview. Actually, I did the interview in December, but he just released it uh, less than two weeks ago. So for those of you who have not seen my interview on Cam Capone news, go check it out. It's just under my name, Damian Porter. And again, his channel is called Cam Capone News. Pretty big channel on YouTube. The interview is essentially two hours long. I believe that I could have did better in the interview. I didn't like the way that I was saying, uh, kept saying, uh, closed my eyes quite a few times and the camera picked that up. Nevertheless, it was only my second interview. 16 to life being my first. So it's something that I'll get better at. And I believe that my next interview will be better than my last. Let's get into it. The bloody vicious removal orchestrated by the others. Where else? Well, in high desert state prison, of course, where a lot of these bloody vicious removals transpire, but they transpire everywhere. Prison is no holds barred. Stay free. Here in High Desert, uh, this year was, well, 2003. And I must preface this story by saying, I believe that Sometimes the blacks have somewhat of a big brother mentality when it comes to the others. Like in some situations, I've seen the Southsiders have the same sort of mentality towards the whites. Like, you know, we're bigger, we're stronger, we're deeper. Y'all are under our thumb. You're going to do as I say, as we say, essentially. Maybe not as overt as that, but low-key, 
that be the understanding. And that be what the blacks be trying to push sometimes. Now, there in high desert, the others, they were not that deep. But since every group was putting in work, they could not be any different if they intended on getting any respect. So they too were putting in work. It just paled in comparison to all of the other groups. But the others hung out with us in our day room, on our side of the day room, there in high desert. And we would play dominoes and cards and pinochle and sometimes gamble in dominoes, pinochle, spades, whatever, at the table in the day room with the others. And, and whomever, the blacks and other blacks gambling amongst each other or just playing dominoes or what have you in the night day room. And the others were at the table gambling with the blacks and dominoes, a two-on-two -two game. Now, this one black guy, he was a Damu, and he was known for putting in work, being a bit hot-headed, and being aggressive in a lot of situations. Oftentimes, going on the offensive promptly. They're, they're gambling. The black, according to the situation, according to the work, he takes umbrage to something the other says or does at the table while they're gambling. So the black, from everyone's take, he gets aggressive with the other and tells the other, gets in his face and basically tells him, He'll knock them out. The other stood up and they started fighting. I believe that the other hit the black first. This is what the word was, that the other hit the black because the black said that he, he would knock them out. So the other probably thinking, well, since he just essentially threatened me, I better knock him out first before he makes good on his threat. So he swung and they start fighting. Now, the other blacks stood up, but they didn't get involved because again, the others are our allies. They are on our side of the day room. We get along with them. We do business with them. We work out with them, all sorts of stuff on these yards. They're part of our group in many ways. And so we didn't want to get up and smash the others uh, because they're having a one-on-one -on -one fight with a black. They let that happen. It's not like the black was losing a the fight. They were scrapping. However, after the fight, and they didn't get caught for the fight, the black started saying that he wanted the other off the yard. He said that the other had disrespected him there while they were gambling. The other had a different story. He said that the black was known for being bellicose and belligerent and disrespecting different people at different times. That essentially the black was a bully and that he just was not a coward. It was not gonna go for his bullying ways. And that the black had threatened him, threatened to knock him out and knock his teeth out. Consequently, he had no choice but to respond. That was his position. My position was, if this were true, if the black had indeed threatened him and the other took flight on him, that's what he was supposed to do. It's understandable. But the Damu, he wants the other off the yard because they had to fight. Not just because they had to fight, he said that the other had disrespected him before the fight. But a lot of people think that he's just sore because the other took off on him first when he was sitting there popping it, running his mouth about knocking him out. Not thinking that the other was going to do anything, was just going to sit there and take the verbal abuse. Well, he had a different idea in mind.
and he took off on the black. Now the black is, of course, upset, perhaps embarrassed. Now he wants the other off the yard. Me, I stand on what I believe. I stand on business at all times. So if the black was wrong, then I'm not going to support getting the other off of the yard. For what? You know, we're not going to be trying to bully them. If it was someone else, would you have the same energy? If so, then yeah. But if not, then no. So many blacks felt the same way, that the situation wasn't necessarily serious enough to have the others remove the guy from the yard. However, the Damu, he continued to push this. And the Damus, well, they were supporting him. And the blacks, <clears throat> not wanting to turn their back on the brother, finally said, we'll support the decision. We'll support the move. Not that the blacks were not standing on business. Not that I was not standing on business. Because again, if he was the one that was wrong, then the other should not be removed from the yard and he will not be removed from the yard. Nevertheless, <clears throat> there were different accounts of the situation that transpired. Many people said that the other was indeed in the wrong. Eventually, the blacks approached the others and they told the others, well, we want this guy removed from the yard for disrespecting our people. The others at first said that they didn't believe that he did anything worthy of being removed from the yard. Well, of course, the blacks being the big brothers, the deeper on the yard, they said that's not going to suffice. He has to leave. Eventually, the others, feeling like if they didn't get him off the yard, it was going to be a problem, decided that they would get him off the yard. Now, again, I was ambivalent about this whole thing. On the one hand, I understood it. On the other hand, I didn't feel like it was that serious. But I don't make all of the decisions. I just have to ride with the situation sometimes and ride with my people. But again... I'm not going to ride with you if you're totally wrong. But in this situation, some said that he was, some said that he wasn't. So eventually, the blacks decided to support him. The others came to the blacks and said, we'll get him off the yard tonight. The day room came a couple of days later at nighttime. And the other, well, he was in his cell. It wasn't his tear to have day room. They got his cell door hit, did a couple of others, and they ran in there. And they attacked him. You heard a lot of tussling, a lot of rumbling, and they hit him with a weapon. The police came running in there because they heard the door being pounded upon. They did not get away with this one. They came running in there, laid everybody down in the day room, opened the cell door, and dude was in there on the floor leaking. But he wasn't leaking very badly. In fact, come to find out, he had just two stab wounds. And the blacks had an issue with this because they said, what kind of removal is this if you run in the cell and get him? And there's two of y'all that run in the cell, and he only has two stab wounds. What, you hit him once and the other guy hit him once? Y'all was in there for 10 minutes. So they felt like they had taken it easy on the guy because they was hesitant to remove him from the beginning. And the blacks almost acted like they wanted to go up with the others because the others had only hit the dude two times. Now, this is when I really got involved and interjected forcefully and told them, we ain't going up. Me and my homies ain't going, we ain't going up. They got him off the yard. They removed him. They hit him. 
didn't really feel like it should have happened to begin with. Many blacks did not. So the fact that they did it, just be happy with that and let it go. What y'all want? Y'all want him to unalive the guy? Because he had a fight in the day room over, over a nominal game? But this is the intensity that permeated high desert. You come outside every morning at your time and the air is thick with violence or the potential for violence for almost any infraction. It's vicious. Mind numbing. You cannot rest and you cannot run afoul of the rules in any way, no matter how trivial you believe it to be. Because if you do, in high desert, you will be attacked. You will be removed from the yard. Period. It was bloody and vicious and thick with misery and hatred. And I'm glad to be the hell out of there. So the others, they removed the guy. But not as bloody and not as viciously as all of the other removals. Perhaps because they felt like he didn't really have it coming anyway. I, on one hand, sort of feel the same way. So I was okay with what eventually transpired. They got him off the yard and that was good enough. Well, coming up people, I have all sorts of stuff coming up since I'm so behind. But I believe when I get my new equipment, I'm gonna take you to the war between the North Daniels and the Hoovers and Salinas Valley State Prison, a level four, 180. The war, it was bloody. It was vicious and many people got hurt. The war was over a phone. We'll get into it. Welcome me back, people. Stay free, my good people, and stay strong. You don't need nobody but yourself.